Hi, I'm Matt, and this is a first look at the new Replit Agent. So today I'm super excited to introduce the Replit Agent and talk a bit about how it works and how it differs from some of the other AI tools I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, we're also gonna build a sample application uh, and I'm really gonna do my best to showcase the functionality of the agent as it exists today. And keep in mind that this is alpha software, so it's expected to change quite a bit over the next few months, but it's already done some pretty impressive things in our internal tests. So when you go to the Replit homepage, if you're a core uh, subscriber, the first thing that you'll see is this big Replit agent early access button. And early access is an important caveat. Uh, this is very new software. Um, things might not function perfectly, uh, but in our internal tests and in some of what we've been seeing on Twitter and the internet so far, uh, it's been able to do some really impressive things. And I'm gonna do something that I think is pretty cool today. Now, if you liked Replit as it was, don't worry, you'll always still be able to create a REPL um, that's always accessible and Replit isn't going anywhere anytime soon. But what is changing is your ability to get started really quickly with the Replit agent. So um, for this demo, I'm going to create a guest book. So I have a guest book on my blog. It took me a while to create. I actually made a tutorial on how to do that, um, but it was difficult. It was hard to configure. I had to set up a database. Um, let's see if that's something the Replit agent can handle for us. So create a guest book um, for my blog. Uh, where users can leave their name and a message. And you know, what's a guest book if those messages don't persist across sessions and across users? That's something that we want to live forever. We don't want just some ephemeral you know, uh, React app that, that doesn't do anything. Uh, so um, make sure the user's um, names and messages persist, just to be very explicit as to what we want. So when I click enter here, what's happening? Um, if you're familiar with other uh, tools, they're kind of more one shot. AI tools are like one shot. You give it a prompt, it builds an application for you, it returns like a single page uh, React app, and that's kind of the end of it. The agent is different. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna think about what to build. So it spends some time planning out the application and planning out those steps. Then it's going to present to me that plan, right? I created a plan for a guest book using Flask, Vanilla, JS, and Postgres. So the app's going to allow users to view existing entries and submit new ones with the data persisting in a database. So the agent's setting up the database for us and connecting it to that application. Um, and then the current functionality is to suggest a list of next steps um, or improvements that uh, you could make on top of the existing app that we suggested. Um, I can select any of those that I want. Uh, let's let's take a look and implement pagination, uh, moderation features. I don't really want any of these. I just want a basic guest book. I could select them and then the agent would move on to those steps after it finished. Um, so I'm just going to hit approve, approve plan and start. And so now the agent's going to start iterating. And the way that the agent's designed is to get me a MVP and make sure that it's what I wanted. So what you're seeing right now is the agent start to edit files in this file system. And what I really want to emphasize is that this is a REPL. This is a virtual container, this is a virtual machine um, where the agent is now creating, editing, uh, updating all of these files, uh, and then it'll be actually creating a database to connect to the guestbook that I'm building. So you can see on the left here, right, it created some CSS, uh, some JavaScript files, it created an HTML file to display a web page, and now it's working on main.py. And we can see all of this in the progress uh, pane. And now the agent is installing packages. It, it created a poetry uh, file, a PyProject file, um, which is a way of managing your environments in Python. Uh, and it started installing Python packages. So more than just generating code, it's showing us and actually creating the environment that we need for this to run. And so at the end of the day, once this is done, I'll have access to all of this code. I'll have access to a working application. Um, the agent's going to guide us through the deployment process, but if I wanted to go into main.py, right, and I wanted to edit this, maybe with Replit's AI tools, right, I could modify this with AI uh, in an interface you might be familiar with. I could open up, you know, the AI pane and ask more questions about this application. Um, or maybe the AI doesn't have context into what I'm trying to build. I could take this uh, and just start writing code to improve it on my own, because maybe I know the domain specific uh, features that I want to add. 
And so it looks like the agent just presented us with a blog guestbook. Um, it's going to prompt me if like everything looks good, but I'm impatient. So I'm going to leave a message. I'm going to say, whoops. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say, hey, uh, y'all. And let's see if it works. It does. So um, I'm able to leave my guestbook entry. And then you can see that uh, it actually took a screenshot of the application. It already knew that it worked. And so then it prompted me with the deployments window. Um, so it built the initial prototype. This is where if we'd added some other features or if I wanted maybe uh, the ability to do something else, I could follow up with the agent and it would continue to iterate, continue to edit the files in the directory um, that we're trying to change, right? But now I just wanna show you how smooth the deployment process is because the agent built this application. It knows what the best type of Repl deployment is. It's gonna suggest a reserve VM. I'm gonna click set up my deployment. Uh, we'll call this uh, Matt's uh, guestbook. I think that should be available. It is. So we, now we can configure um, our machine. We can make this more powerful if we want. And it already configured the Python uh, run command. Um, and then the other really amazing thing, right, is that if I go to a new Postgres um, pane, we have a database. We have a Postgres database that has, if I click this, um, entries for each user. So just like we had specified in our initial plan, the agent uh, is going to keep track of all of these users that created a Postgres database. We're gonna have that data forever. Um, multiple users can come and edit the guestbook at, multi at you know simultaneously um, and we'll retain all that data. They'll be able to see other users that engage with the guestbook. Uh, so this is a, you know, it's a full stack application with a database, a front end, a back end, and <laughs> the agent built that out, connected everything for us, and now we're gonna deploy it. So if I head over the deployments pane, again, the agent hooked up the database. It suggested all this stuff for me. Um, and now I'm just gonna click deploy. Uh, and we're gonna go through the deployment process. Um, so uh, this is the Replit agent. While this is deploying, again, I'll talk a bit about the differences between the Replit agent and some uh, other tools, um, or really just talk about what's going on here. The agent is reasoning. It's accepting user input. It's iterating. Uh, and it has access to the entire Replit environment. And what you that means is that you can think about the agent more like a pair programmer. It's a pair programmer in the sense that it can set up your environment. It can install packages. It can create files. It can create services that Replit has exposed to the agent. Uh, we've gone ahead and exposed everything in the Replit interface to the agent. So if the agent thinks your application needs a database, it can create a database. If, you're at, if the agent thinks you should be uh, running a script as a scheduled deployment, it can say, hey, Here's how you would configure a scheduled deployment to work with this interface. Um, and the awesome thing is that, you know, at Replit, we've built a ton of tools to make uh, our environments, to make our uh, virtual machines the best for building and deploying software. And that means that you can install Python, you can install Node um, in one line, and so can the agent. You can configure uh, your Python environment in one file very quickly, and so can the agent. And that unlocks a world of possibility in creating with AI. And I think it means that you'll be able to create some really exciting tools, some really exciting projects. And that's something we've already seen our users doing so far. So now let's jump back to our application. The deployment process should be finished. So you can see that uh, in three minutes, um, Replit provisioned this entire environment that the agent created, took a snapshot of that code. Again, this works the same way that Replit deployments currently work and pushed it to this URL. And if I go to the URL, I get <laughs> my guestbook uh, with a message from me. Um, and this should work, right? You know, if I said, uh, Matt, and I wanted to leave another uh, message and I click submit, we get another message. And uh, these are exactly what I would expect them to look like. So that's been an introduction to the Repl agent. I'm really excited to see what y'all build. I think there's some amazing opportunities out there. Uh, and this unlocks, you know, uh, the uh, potential for people that haven't had the chance to build with some of these technical tools before. And more than that, I think because the agent is so um, explanatory, because it shows how it's thinking and it shows the files that it's editing, I think that by using this tool, you'll be able to learn how these components fit into one another. And that's something that I've noticed in building with AI personally is that, you know, some of the concepts might seem foreign at first, but the more that I build with them, the more I understand 
how these things fit together and why they fit together. And you know, if you ever have a question, you can just open the Replit AI tab and say, hey, why are we using vanilla JS in this project? What is the purpose of using JavaScript for a front end and Python for a back end? How does Flask work? And AI, you know, powered by our AI is powered by Sonnets, powered by GPT-40, is going to be able to answer those questions and help you learn how these components fit together. And that's just going to allow you to create better applications to create um, more specific uh, tools, because then you'll be able to prompt um, the agent, you'll be able to prompt Replit AI with more context. Uh, and yeah, you know, uh, this, this agent is the next iteration in building with AI, right? Initially, uh, we had these systems where you could prompt um, with sort of one shot prompts and get uh, a single page application. Um, then things kind of moved to code editors. That was maybe the second phase. And now we have autonomous systems that have their own development environment that can iterate, uh, that can accept feedback um, and configure all of the nuances, all of the services that you might need for a full stack application and deploy that to the web. So that's the Replit agent. It's available in early access for all Replit core script subscribers today. Uh, head on over to replit.com, log in, take a look and start building. I can't wait to see what you guys build. <laughs> Again, I'm Matt in developer relations with Replit and this has been a first look at the Replit agent. Until next time, peace.